peaceful, isn't it? God, I just love the fall. Anyways, today's video, I'm going to talk to you about a quick way to accurately measure what size generator you need. This is going to be important because in my upcoming generator series, which is going to be done in two days, we're going to talk about a completely different game plan for you guys when it comes to generators. You'll see a lot of videos out there talking about this thing's a beast. It'll run your whole house and I'm going to have you go in a different direction and I'm going to show you multiple size generators and a game plan we should have learned. We should have learned from Hurricane Helene extended power outages. That's what we're going to plan for. And I want you to have a game plan where we have the game plan for a short 24 hour power, one or two day power outage, and then an extended power outage. You need to be thinking about both. And so it's going to be interesting. Also in our series, um, this one box right here that just came in, this box is going to change communications, emergency communications, I think forever. I think for starting in 2025, this is going to be incredible. Now I'll talk about things like GMRS radios and ham radios, but honestly, I think this right here is going to pretty much take over all of that emergency communication. So I'll go over that. I'm going to cover a bunch of different stuff. So when it comes to measuring, uh, let me just get right to it because I want to keep this video short because I got six other videos to do. What you want to do is you want to say, okay, what are my vital things that I want to run? You want to pick your vitals. So I'm going to have a power outage, one or two days. Now a whole house generator, if you're without power for 12 hours, no problem. I've got two of them out here that can run my whole house. Um, but when you're talking long term, more than that, which I've been through, I've been through 10 days without power. And there are a lot of people through Helene, all up and down the states that have been 12 to 14 days without power. That's what you need to kind of think about. What's your B plan? Everyone has an A plan, which is like whole house. And what's the B plan? What happens when it's extended? So pick your vitals. So let's say you refrigerator, if you have a freezer, not many people have a, uh, a separate freezer, but some people do. So refrigerator, freezer, TV, internet, Wi-Fi, and a couple LED light bulbs to keep things lit. I think that's the key to it. Now in the summertime, I'll give you an example down at our beach house. Our, my primary is a refrigerator, the TV, internet, Wi-Fi, um, and uh, a window unit plus a couple light bulbs. So a window AC unit. Now I've done videos, people ask all the time, how come you have a window unit on your brand new model? I always have window units, especially in the main bedroom, in our master or primary bedroom. Because in a power outage, those things only use about anywhere from 500 to 700 watts. And man, let me tell you what, when you're sleeping, everyone else is sleeping and it's 90, 94 degrees and humid, and you've got a bedroom that's 69 degrees or 70 degrees, trust me, you'll thank me. I always have, I have several of those backup window units. So you're going to pick that. So down at the beach house, we had a power outage for two and a half days um, after Helene came through. It wasn't that bad. And I ran a window unit, the TV, the Wi-Fi, refrigerator, and actually I ran uh, my neighbor's refrigerator too. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. What is that specific? Now here's option one. Go to Google and type in how much does a refrigerator use? How many watts does a refrigerator use? How many watts does a TV? And you can make a list. And it's gonna give, it's gonna give you a ballpark. So it's gonna say somewhere between 700 and 600 and 1000 watts, but you don't really know exactly if you're trying to precisely choose a generator. So I'll show you a way that you can measure that exactly. The other thing, there are a bunch of charts. You can just go to Google and type in uh, appliance wattage chart and you'll see a bunch of charts. Same thing, they're gonna give you ballparks. Ballparks on window units, ballpark on your HVAC systems. But let me show you a little tool that I think everybody should have. Now there are two ways to do this. They make these little wattage meters that you, could, that you get on Amazon for about 20 bucks. You plug in, you plug it in, and it'll tell you. The only thing is, is not all those will tell you what was my peak wattage. In other words, what was the highest amount? A lot of them are gonna give you like the total kilowatts used and that kind of stuff. So you need to make sure that you get one that just shows you what was my peak watts. That's what we want to. That's what we want to understand. So let me grab. Uh, let me grab this little meter and I'll show you. Okay. So excuse the crude studio here. I'm in the kitchen and 
There are these plug-in meters that you can buy that once you plug them in, then you can plug something into it and it'll show you on the screen and you can go through and you can see volts, amps, and wattage. The, the, they run about 30 bucks. The only problem with them is once you use them, I don't know that you'll ever use them again. So here's what I want you, here's what I want you to see. For about 70 something bucks, you can buy this. This is fantastic, by the way. So this is actually, I guess in layman's terms, we'll call this a wa uh, amp ring. This is an ampage ring. That's typically what you use. So when you use this thing, you will turn it to amps. You'll turn it to amps, you'll hear the beep, and you'll take a single wire. So you have, uh, you have the hot, you have neutral, and you have ground. You'll go over either the hot or the neutral, and you would put this over that, and it'll tell you how many watts, or how many, excuse me, how many amps you're drawing. So when you, your amps. Now the way that you figure out watts is you take your amps times whatever your outlet is. So a regular plug is 120 in the house. So if I'm drawing, let's say, 10 amps times 120, what's that gonna be? That's pretty simple math. Um, but you can, what you cannot do, excuse me, I got a little toaster here, <laughs> my Walmart toaster. Uh, you cannot take a regular plug, put this around this with both leads in there, it's not gonna work. So this is not gonna tell you because both leads are inside of there. Make sense? You'd actually have to take apart the wall outlet and put this around one of them. So here's how they solved that. They came up with this little splitter device. This is genius. This is a little splitter device with a plug on the end. So you plug this into your wall, then you plug your toaster. This toaster is gonna fall over because it has a tiny cord. And then you plug this into, oops, neutral side. Then you plug that into here and now the leads are separated. So now what you can do, you go over either one, and you can put it over it and you'll see how many amps. Again, whatever my toaster draws, that times 120 is gonna give me my wattage. So let's actually do this. So I'm gonna turn the, the I'm gonna push the power down. Okay, and when you do that, when you, when you put it into here, it's gonna say 57. It actually multiplies it times 10. So when you're in this higher mode, it says 57, it's actually 5.7 amps. Okay, so a lot of people ask about air conditioning. This is one thing I'm telling you. <laughs> this is that U-shaped air conditioner. I did a review on them. I now own three of these things. They're wonderful. Now this is a small unit and in a big master bedroom, this thing keeps it at 69, 70, it's 69 degrees, really cold and it's super quiet. All the noise is on the outside. So what I'm gonna do, I've got this plugged in here and I wanna turn it on. So I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna try it on the 20. For some reason, I don't understand why. Sometimes it works on the 20, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so I've got this set to cool, high fan, and that's how loud this is. These things are so quiet. And let's see what I'm reading here. I am pulling 7.9 amps equals 948 watts. So 948 watts to run this. Again, this is on high cool. So I'm gonna switch it over to 20. See, I get the same thing. I get Now I got 8.1. So let's go 8.1, 8.1 times 120, 972. So I think it's important to note that when you're gonna measure something like a refrigerator, you unplug your refrigerator, you plug it back in through this splitter, and your refrigerator is not on. So maybe you're showing it's only drawing one amp. You have to get that refrigerator to kick into gear. So the, I did my refrigerator. I have a medium-sized refrigerator inside my shed. I had to leave the doors open because it was cool out for like 10 minutes, and then turn it back on, turn the temperature up, and it finally kicked on. And my medium refrigerator was only like 5.4 amps. Now, there is a feature on here. There are other features. So as an example, what you're supposed to do, if you use the splitter, this is a little bit confusing to me. If you use the splitter, the splitter multiplies it times 10. That's what they say. However, I have used that splitter and it didn't multiply it times 10. So I don't know. So if you see something, if you're running, you know, 
a refrigerator and it says 54 amps, that's not right. The refrigerator is going to be, you know, 5 to 8 amps, something like that. So what you do is you turn it to the uh, you turn it to the 200 to 400 amps, and you get your in that when you're using your splitter. Once you put it over that splitter, what you can do is you can push max, and what that max will do is while that's on there, it'll record the highest level, which is nice. So during that whole run, it'll tell you what's the highest level of amps that are being recorded. That's the nice thing about it. It also has a hold button. So if you want to press hold, you can freeze it and hold it. It has a backlit button so you can backlight the display. But the beautiful thing about this is it's not just, it's not just a, a regular amp ring. It also has volts, so you can do DC voltage. You can actually do um, 120, do regular uh, AC voltage. All kinds of features on this, plus the hot wire tester at the top. It does come with the test, the probes. Again, my probes are over in my shed. You can plug those in and you can test the voltage. I did that, came out fine. Most of my outlets are reading like 117, which is normal for a 120. So again, for this upcoming video, we're gonna to want to determine the precise amount of wattage that we're using for our selected things so that we can be real precise on a generator that's a real fuel miser. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a generator that I ordered for you guys that with one gallon of gasoline will probably run somewhere between six to eight hours on one gallon of gasoline. Now I used to have a big old storm generator that was like 10,000 watts yeah, it has a good run time, but man, that tank was eight gallons. It had an eight gallon tank, and some of these big ones have 14 gallon tanks. You really need to focus on fuel consumption, and that's why we're doing this breakdown. That's one of the things we're gonna focus on. Make sure you hit subscribe, push like if you liked the video, if you found it helpful. Um, again, I will post this video on my normal channel, plus the Savage uh, Prepping channel, and Products that I'm linking to will be over at savageprepping.com while I'm doing all this testing for you guys. So uh, that's about it. I got a bunch of other videos to shoot. Talk to you later. Doc.